Until 2 o'clock by the phones that I have, so we will go ahead and call the uh, Transportation Policy Committee meeting to order for this uh, Thursday, April 6, 2023. Uh, Mr. McDonald, if you will call roll, please, to declare a quorum. Be my pleasure. Judge Krebs. Here. Mr. Charlie Zahn. Here. Uh, Judge Connie Scott. Mayor Guardo. She's not here. Uh, Mayor Scro. Present. Uh, Mr. Leindecker. Uh, Mr. Olivares here. Uh, Mr. Buckner, we have a quorum. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Lindecker called and said he was under the weather, mm -hmm. by the way. So, yeah. so we're glad he's at home. That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> keep that weather at home, <laughs> not here. <laughs> okay, uh, public comment. Is there any public comment this morning? Anyone present? Okay. Not online either. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to item three, approval of our February the 2nd, 2023 uh, minutes. I think those were sent out to you. If there's the any. Okay, got a motion by Commissioner Zahn. Do I have a second? Second. Second it by Mr. Oliveira. Okay, being no discussion on the minutes, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item four, we're gonna have action items and review discussion and possible actions on 4A, adoption of the 2023 payment and bridge condition and uh, system performance and freight performance measures and targets. I think Mr. McDonald, you have this one, correct? I'm gonna get my notes here. No, Mr. Casper, you have it this morning. Good I got y'all backwards today on this one, okay. He lost the coin flip. Oh, he yeah. did? Okay. I do have this one. And we are asking uh, for approval of the, this um, resolution. So federal regulations mandate that state DOTs, MPOs, and transit agencies all use performance-based planning and programming. This means that we have to have explicit uh, goals that are based on at least the seven national goals. And each of these goals must have performance measures that can track progress toward achieving the goals. Uh, Congress has established three sets of performance measures to jumpstart this process that state DOTs must customize and use for their processes. These are PM1, safety, which you have approved previously, PM2 for infrastructure condition, and PM3 for mobility performance. As an MPO, we are given the option of either adopting our own performance measures or uh, using the state's measures to evaluate and program projects. Every MPO in Texas so far has chosen to support state measures. Uh, the corollary of programming projects that support the state DOT measures, though, is not selecting projects that don't support uh, state measures. The full list of the TxDOT performance measures are shown in attachment two. Um, the performance measures for PM2 uh, infrastructure condition are the percentage of pavements on the, on the interstate system that are in good condition, the percentage of pavements on the interstate system that are in poor condition, the percentage of pavements on the non-interstate NHS in good condition, and the percentage of pavements on the non-interstate NHS in poor condition. The, for bridge condition, it's the percentage of NHS bridges classified in good condition or the percentage of NHS bridges classified in poor condition. You'll see there's a lot of NHS, which stands for the National Highway System. Uh, so all of the performance measures relate to the performance of the national highway system. There are no performance measures that relate to roads not on national highway system. The uh, performance uh, for PM3, it's the percentage of person miles traveled on the interstate that are reliable and the percentage uh, of the person miles traveled on the non-interstate NHS that are reliable. Okay, again, NHS and interstate and reliable, that's not to say congested. So if SPID is congested every day from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., bumper to bumper stop and go traffic, that's completely reliable and totally acceptable according to the performance measures uh, that are used. Um, if you look at attachment two, you'll see about two thirds of the way down, there is a line that says truck travel time reliability and that is the travel of semi trucks and how reliable that is on the Again, national highway system. Below that is the annual hours of peak hour excessive delay per capita, and then it lists MPOs throughout the state on the way down, and then below that are total emissions. Uh, so those all pertain to areas that are in non-attainment of air quality and thus receive congestion mitigation category five funding. So those are the performance measures for category five. So. Um, those are the performance measures um, 
the targets that TechStot has established, you, if you, I'll just cover a couple of them quickly to cover any potential issues. Um, the percentage of pavements, you'll see the baseline, the percentage of pavement on the interstate system in poor condition, the target is to go from 0.1% to increase the percentage in poor condition to 0.2%. Obviously, TxDOT does not want more interstates in poor condition. What, what, it, what that is showing is that uh, TxDOT's very sophisticated pavement management system, which uses everything from precipitation, freeze-thaw cycles, percentage of trucks, total traffic volume, age, type, and thickness of pavement, there's a whole huge model that goes into that, is, is showing that more than 0.2% of the pavement in two years will entropy will decay into poor condition without significant investment. So TxDOT's target is to reduce the speed of, of decay of the interstate systems so that it only doubles is the way, way to look at it. Um, and uh, the same goes with the bridges, the NHS bridges in poor condition. The baseline is 1.1%. The target in two years is 1.5%. And it's, a, it's the same sort of, sort of thing. Um, your technical advisor committee and the MPO staff all recommend that you adopt the statewide performance measures and targets as the MPO statewide measures and targets. Um, and I guess, well, that's it, but it's something that, a conversation we should revisit in the future. Okay. Got a motion by Commissioner Zonda. Have a second. Second. Got a seconded by Mayor Scarro. Any other discussion, questions? Valenti, you have anything on it? No, if, if you first look at the table, it's, you know, it's counterintuitive, right? It's, you know, mm -hmm. like, why would you want to increase? But yeah. Greg did a good job of explaining. There's a lot of factors that go into this, and really just think of it as lane miles and we keep building more lane miles mm -hmm. they have to be maintained so look at the dollars being spent into the maintenance and and new lanes being built our job is try to minimize the, right. the impacts sense. there for having so many roadways in, in that poor yep. condition so okay uh, that's basically what I okay. okay thank you okay i got a motion and a second and, uh, any other discussion questions hearing none all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. those opposed same sign motion carries Okay, we got 4B, adoption of the Transit Asset Management Plan and Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan, and Performance Measures, and Target. Mr. McDonald, you have this one. I've got this one. Okay. And Director Leindecker's not here, so he can't present it either. So, um, yeah, this, this item is uh, really right in line with what uh, Craig was talking about in performance measures. Uh, part of the federal rules and regs require that the MPO take a look at uh, two other things, uh, one of which is the Transit Asset Management Plan. I'll hold up the cover page in case you didn't remember it from the link we gave you. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go through all whatever pages. Uh, it's quite a bit. Uh, but this particular plan is, is developed by the RTA. Uh, they do it on their timeline. They do it uh, through their board of directors. They follow the FTA rules and regs for it. And like we do with other performance measure, when TxDOT does things statewide, the local transit provider, when they do their transit asset management plan, we, the MTO, adopt it as, as yours. Now remember this as the other performance measures, the projects that transit puts forth in your four-year plan, the 10-year plan, and the 25-year plan, they're selected in part based on the transit asset management plan. And so when we adopt it, it will go in to make all their projects eligible for all the federal funds when it shows up in our MPO, four-year, 10-year, and 25-year plan. So this is the start of that. Uh, the, there's no projects in here, but it's how they're going to uh, address the performance measures. So that's the first part of it. Second part, and I'll show you the, the, the Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan. The feds, here's the cover. I just want to show that one time. Um, you have the link in your packet. Um, again, this is a, a real big deal. Safety from the federal level down to the local level, safety is a big deal. So following all the rules and regs, the, the RTA board revised this uh, last December in 2022. 
So as we start packaging all the performance measures, you're going to have five of them. The two that I'm talking about, two that Craig talked about. February did performance measure one, which as you remember is safety. So you're going to have those five as your suite of performance measures that eventually will lead to project selection when all the hundreds of millions of dollars are awarded over the, the next probably six months to a year. And so we're also tracking a possible other performance measure. Uh, carbon reduction seems to be on its way to another performance measure. TxDOT's talking about it. Every state's talking about it. Federal government's talking about it. We don't have that for you today. We have these two. So for this item, we have a resolution for you that both uh, your technical advisor committee and staff are recommending that you adopt these two plans. We have not changed anything in the plan except we're asking you to take it in to be the MPO two part of the plan as part of all these performance measures. And someday when everything comes together nicely, we'll have one item for you for all the performance measures to be adopted at once. And so right now it's a little disjointed because we have a February approval, you have now this approval, oh. performance measure four, whatever that may be, that may show up this summer. If it does, TxDOT and we will bring it on to you and we'll define what it is. But right now we're working on it and every state's working on it. So for these two items, uh, RTA did a lot of good work. I know we have some of their staff in the audience to answer any questions you may have. Uh, with that, we are recommending approval. Any questions of Mr. McDonald, our staff? What's the commission's pleasure? Resolution. I move to adopt resolution. We got a motion by Commissioner Zahn. Did I have a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Mr. Oliveras. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. And those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, concludes our action uh, items for this afternoon. We will go into information items. First of all, we're going to have 5A, which is going to be a new, uh, the new Harbor Bridge presentation and update. And I think Lynn Allison, you're going to do that. Welcome. Hi there. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, just real quick, Mr. McDonald, are we streaming live? I have. We are. Uh, okay. Is it through YouTube or through the live stream on the MPO? Uh, live stream through the MPO website. Okay. I just had a couple of colleagues who were trying to follow, and our project engineer, in case I get stumped. <laughs> Okay. We're recording there you go. Live. Okay, that's right. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Right. Ready for some rain, I hope. Um, uh, I have a presentation here that will probably take longer than your meeting, so I'm going to talk <laughs> very quickly. Um, you can slow me down, or we can take your questions after I'm finished. Uh, just a introductory slide here. Thank you for having me today. Oh, yes, I'm too tall. Uh, let me point out and introduce my project manager and project executive with Dragados on the Harbor Bridge Project. Uh, Justo Molina is joining me as well. So thank you for joining today. Um, an agenda, just to give you an idea of what we're going to cover here, we're going to go over the construction progress for the entire project, uh, north approach, north roadworks, south interchange and roadworks, Precast yard activities, uh, going to touch on the local workforce and economic impact, the safety program that we have, uh, the cable sta the uh, DBE goals and incentives, and um, of course our cable stay bridge. I separated that from the construction progress items just so Mr. Olivares may want to comment towards the end of this presentation. Uh, as you've probably seen before in previous presentations, we talk about the project in sections from the North Roadworks area, which is the North Beach kind of corridor to the new bridge, uh, the North Approach, that's sort of the runway leading up to the bridge, the Cable State Bridge over the Corpus Christi Ship Channel, uh, the South Approach, uh, runs alongside the Salt Flat Channel, South Roadworks and Interchange, and then the Precast Yard in Ropstown. So we're going to start with the North Approach construction progress. These photos are all current uh, from 
just over a week ago. I like to include a current photo uh, on every part of the project in every presentation just to really break this down for you. Um, here you can see we've completed, as you all know, the Substruct the substructure and superstructure work that involved the gantry crane on the north approach. So now we're finalizing the last four remaining spans, utilizing this false work erection or scaffolding to place these last four spans. We hit a milestone last week, uh, actually, yes, last week, and completed all the substructure and pier caps for the remaining substructure. Um, and you can see how the abutment wall is coming together towards the bottom left that will transition the 181 up onto the bridge. I'm gonna have to put my glasses on. So next here, staying on North Beach, is a look at our North Beach roadworks and utilities. This long photo on the right kind of gives you an idea of how the 181 will tie in to the existing bridge, or to the new bridge rather, and then all of what you see on the left will come out in phase two once we open the new bridge. Um, again, you can see there's all kinds of new uh, frontage road, road work that's been completed and sidewalk. Um, here on the left, I included this photo just as to never uh, understate the importance of our utilities on this project. Uh, we have three, we have four high mass lights on in North Beach area. Uh, we also have a drainage line, I'm not sorry, water package installation underway here at Breakwater Avenue on the left side. So we've shifted traffic onto Bridgeport. That'll be a 12 inch water line completed by the uh, 1st of May. Uh, we've completed several drainage packages for the area, including um, a six by three foot run uh, that will go alongside the north approach from Breakwater to Burleson. Um, really will, and we're working currently with this rain coming to, we have temporary drainage mitigation in place for any flooding that comes our way with pumps and uh, O&M crews working around the clock on standby in preparation. We're going to jump over to the other side and look at our south approach construction progress. Um, the gantry crane crew is making tremendous headway. They will be finishing these last four spans that will be, they'll be finished by the summer and then they will begin launch the gantry crane all the way back to the approach here at the uh, south end of the approach and start decommissioning that large crane which will take a couple of months. Uh, the gap you see kind of here on the bottom right will be the transition span that is part of the cable stay bridge span. So the gantry will finish up here to this last pier and then will be completely finished with the uh, structure for the uh, south approach. Um, here you can also see on the left just how there will be a jump that will be all part of the a uh, back span of the cable stay bridge. Just want to point out to you the, the, <laughs> the coordination that it takes with the uh, rail line running in the underneath this back, uh, south approach. We had to have um, certi certifications, training, additional staff on standby with um, a watch crew on the ground monitoring any rail activity. So it was significant um, coordination with UPRR to build over that rail track. Uh, we will have, we did open Port Avenue just this week for the opening of Hook's uh, baseball season. Um, we had Port Avenue, the section closed and a detour to Broadway. We're gonna reopen that to finish next week when there's no home games. So here you can see what's happening with the south approach, the, uh, the south construction, roadworks and interchange. Very complex with what's going on in this photo. Two of the four new direct connectors are open to traffic. The third one is finished and that you can see kind of towards the top right of the photo and it will be open with the new bridge. Those will both connect uh, 181 and IH37, the two remaining direct connectors. Uh, you can see here we opened the traffic switch was conducted at the end of March. That was very significant as we shifted IH37 traffic onto new main lanes and a new bridge that you can see here where the loop ramp comes underneath. Uh, that opened up a tremendous amount of scope of work for us to begin uh, constructing the second loop ramp, which will kind of parallel the, the northwest loop ramp that you can see here, and that will connect commuters coming 
um, southbound on 181 towards the Bayfront area, uh, onto IH 37 towards the Bayfront area. Also, we have finished uh, demolishing all of the old IH-37 flyover ramps, so that was significant and currently removing a lot of that embankment. Also very noteworthy in this photo is the Leopard Street corridor that's coming together nicely and will open this fall. That will make for just a, an easier access to the uptown area here at City Hall and the courthouse coming in from um, the Cal Allen area on IH-37. Uh, I want to point out in this photo, and you'll see another photo, drainage and utility work is also very significant in this very low-lying area. We've tripled the capacity of the salt flat channel. You can see excavation is continuing in the retaining pond inside that northwest loop ramp that's open, and additional retaining will be in place inside the southwest loop ramp. Um, lots of drainage work yet to be tied in for this area. Again, 21 high mass lights throughout the project. Many of them are concentrated in this area. Just want to touch on these uh, south interchange milestones. Again, staying in the same area. Like I said, we did the transition onto new IH-37 lanes last month. Uh, we opened a new ramp heading southbound on IH-37 to exit towards Port Avenue. Uh, also, last month, we opened a new turnaround here. You can see kind of the top left of the image. Let's see if I do that. Oh, no, my mouse won't make that highlight for you. Oh, the, yeah, you can see. We opened a new turnaround at Nueces Bay Boulevard and a new entrance ramp right here for southbound IH-37. Again, helping with commuters that miss the Northwest Loop ramp and don't have to go all the way to Upriver Road to turn around. Um, really want to point out Lake Street here. This is a, a high point of focus right now to open Lake Street by the 1st of May. This is the a route that will take the place of the Oville Williams Senior Center area where Winnebago was closed. That will help with um, getting some of the additional traffic off of Martin Luther King Drive Frontage Road. Uh, Again, there will be pedestrian lighting and um, street lighting illumination there as well. Make sure I didn't miss anything. And now we've also continued construction on the second half of the new H37 bridge over 181 and those additional main lanes. So here's another area I want to touch on, uh, very important to our folks at Metro Ministries, uh, the area around Doss, Messina, and Leopard with the new bridge coming online in addition to the city bond work in that area. is It's very congested. Uh, we're, we've just completed new uh, uh, roads of Messina and Doss and sidewalks and curb and gutter. We excavated out 18 inches of those roads at Messina and Doss and replaced it with uh, 12 inches of um, concrete treated base, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but significant in having these sidewalks. You can see they're um, ADA accessible and will assist with our partners at the, at the RTA and, and some of the bus stops in that area. We also completed new driveways for Metro Ministries and the Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church on Mestina as well. Uh, I know everyone gets frustrated with our construction uh, detours. We have placed significant signage around the project, over 100 directional and construction signs, these orange signs for detours and construction movements, uh, blue signs to focus on to, to help direct folks to the impacted businesses in the area, attractions on North Beach. Uh, we have added additional um, traffic control on North Beach to eliminate some of that confusion over there and then additional underbridge lighting as well and back to Nueces Bay Boulevard and Port Avenue uh, which were in the previous slides underbridge lighting has also been installed on both of those bridges in the last two months to help with the pedestrian traffic in that area. I uh, want to touch on our precast yard activities. Uh, we certainly have a lot going on at the precast yard. It has really been the heartbeat of this project. You can see how big these transports are of these main span segments and delta frames coming to and from the uh, Cable Stay Bridge pylons. 
each each segment has to have its own traffic control with uh, coordination with the Port of Corpus Christi uh, police escort. Um, you can see each segment and Delta frame is transported on a SPMT. So it's a significant um, activity to move these Delta frames and these main span segments. Uh, through March of 2023, our precast yard operations are more than 90% complete. Uh, we're casting up to uh, 20 to 30 uh, main span segments per month. Uh, we're hauling 30 to 40 segments to the Cable State Bridge pylons uh, and to finish the approach spans on North Beach. Uh, to date, we have cast uh, 1,850 of 2,651 segments. Um, all of the approach segments are completed and were finished with that casting last year, last spring. A uh, very significant milestone in March, just last week, we completed casting all of the delta frames, 84 delta frames for the Cable Stay Bridge. Uh, we have remaining about 150 main span segments to finish and we'll have that complete uh, this summer. Or by September, close enough. I want to highlight what, what's going on with our workforce and our economic impact to the area. We have undergone a significant hiring campaign. Uh, we're up to over 400 employees for the LLC, and then we have up to 300 subcontractors involved in working on the project at any given time. Uh, significant impact to the local economy. We have folks living in Portland in hotels and apartments uh, have contributed uh, through sales tax, state and local, uh, in $400 million worth of sales tax, not $400 million, but sales tax on that amount uh, to date so far. Uh, we are very pleased with our workforce. It, it's been no small task to compete with all of the industry activity, um, but we have really managed to hang on to the quality of our and what's expected of this project despite all of the kind of ups and downs over this year. I uh, really want to touch also on uh, kind of a fun project I was able to take on last month. We hosted a women in construction event on the project where we featured um, engineers that work in construction, uh, women in the field, uh, really trying to recruit more women into construction and showcase their talents. Uh, we also have a very strong uh, disadvantaged business enterprise program. We've exceeded our goal and we're at 9% for the total project. Also. Uh, work to recruit through our website as uh, small business enterprises. Uh, we spend locally where we can. Um, it's really important that we do that. Some, uh, some of it, uh, as you know, we can't do it all locally, but we're really proud to partner with several of these folks. And this was part of National Women in Construction Week in early March. So. I also want to brag on our safety program. Uh, just Monday we had our all hands first of the month monthly safety meeting where we have sort of a sunrise, everyone meet together and, and do some stretching and have topics and, and guests come in to uh, offer refresher courses on safety from fall protection to uh, trench training. Uh, we do awards and incentives for quarterly and monthly. Um, you can see the backpacks and the incentives. Also, our safety record is 1.1 for the total project of recordable injuries. That is significant as the national standard is 2.4. So we're really proud of that number as well. Here we get into the bridge, fun stuff. Um, I'm gonna go over all of this fun construction here. This is our North Tower. Uh, this photo is very significant on the left side because you all, may not see the whole tower lit up at night, but we have crews working 24 seven. They may be up in the top lift here at night, 2 a.m. on the bottom working on the um, activities on the ground. So this is, like I said, our north pylon. Um, we submitted a revised timeline from the developer standpoint to open this bridge in 2025. So that's, I wanna say the first half of 2025, we haven't released the exact month yet. Um, crews are working around the clock, as you, as I said. Um, so for the upper tower, we have activity on, we've completed all the substructure, as you can see. We're on upper tower lift eight. We just finished pouring that last week. Uh, there will be 
20 total upper towers, and each upper tower lift, upper tower lifts. Each one is about 17 feet. So you can see we still have 200 feet to go, just to give you an idea of how tall this bridge is. Um, really a lot going on in this photo from jumping the tower crane to the median slab has been poured and is kind of connects the two northbound and southbound lanes. You can see a lot of crane activity that's underway here. Um, had a significant milestone in March, where in lift eight, we placed the first of the 20 steel cable boxes. Next significant milestone coming up in May is we're gonna run the first state cable. So we're really excited about that. We're gonna showcase that on our social media project website. Um, we have a great team involved with experience from all over the world. So real excited for that upcoming milestone. On the south side, not too far behind at all, the south pylon, uh, again, crews are working 24 hours a day. Uh, we have just last week poured upper tower lift seven, um, that, actually this week, Monday night. Um, here you can see what, how big of a delta frame, how big these delta frames are and how much it takes to lift those delta frames. Um, segment activity is underway on both sides in coordination with the port. Um, construction of the main span and back span median slab, like I said, on the north side is also underway. You can see these kind of jutting out arms. Uh, those are part of the uh, cable, the stay cable platform to allow access as we begin uh, running the first cables. And this next slide is, is really interesting to me. It really kind of showcases our uh, cable stay bridge sequencing with the cables. Uh, like I said earlier, we're gonna have 20 upper tower lifts by the time this bridge is complete. Uh, it'll be about 540 feet tall each, uh, and there will be 20 total cables run. Each tower will have three uh, Derrick cranes lifted up onto deck. Uh, two of those cranes will run um, northward, northbound and southbound on sort of a, con a hydraulic conveyor. The third crane will be stationary and placing those segments onto a, um, an SPMT that's actually located up on the deck to move the segments back and forth as they're placed. Uh, here, like I said earlier, this is the transition pier that leads up here to the approach uh, span. This is the back span pier. This on both sides, which I'm sure Chairman Zahn has noticed, are um, temporary towers in place. This, this tower here will come down. It's in place through the duration of running these stay cables. So I hope you all can really see the activity underway as you all drive back and forth from Portland, Mayor's Group. Um, just a reminder, as you can see now, this is really coming together. The lighting features on this bridge will be phenomenal. Um, the contractor is already procured for the lighting is on site and active. Uh, the RGB LED lights are color addressable. Uh, these two, uh, these, the towers will have high output LED lights uh, that'll be placed on the surface, surface deck and can extend upward and downward. Um, the lighting will come up through the delta frames. Uh, there will be unlimited options on these programmable lights. They'll be protected inside the structures, which will be different from the existing Harbor Bridge where we had to deal with some corrosion and have those, those lights removed. Um, my office is available to all of you at any time. I just presented to the Corpus Christi City Council. I have Judge Scott in Nueces County Commissioner's Court next week. I'm happy for any of you to reach out to me. I'm excited to come see the new, uh, I don't think I'm supposed to call it courthouse in San Patricio, uh, but good for you over there. Um, please let me know if you have anything, any questions. I, I do wanna point out that I do have a monthly, it's really fantastic, it's about a six minute project video, drone video that covers the whole project. I didn't wanna tack that on today just in the interest of your time, but please go to our website or our social media to look at that aerial drone photo. Um, with that, I want to extend something uh, in addition on behalf of the developer. We just really appreciate all of you, the, the community leaders. I'm, I know Chairman Leindecker couldn't be here today along with our other mayor and county judge, but you've all been supportive and patient and uh, we are here and committed. We have world-class talent from all over the world between Dragados and Flatiron have built many of these types of structures and our de developer design, design team on the new bridge, uh, Arup CFC as well, has built many of these cable stay bridges. So with that, any questions? Any questions of Ms. Allison? Well, thank you for coming in.
and thank you for the update. I mean, we're, we see lots of progress going Thanks. on out there now from what it was six, eight months ago when it was just dead stopped. <laughs> Absolutely. And Trust so me. It, I think well, the I'm doing cartwheels <laughs> right now about us being back on track. And, and thanks uh, to our, our working relationship with TxDOT, we are really striving to move forward in, in a very yeah, positive and way. Y'all are doing a good job moving forward, God. definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Oliveris, you have something to yes, add on to her? Yes, I want to give Lynn the opportunity first if y'all had any questions on the presentation yeah, any questions of Lynn. for her. Okay, well, I'll, I'll add you. to the presentation. Uh, Last time we were here, I mentioned that we had come to a resolution on four out of the five major deficiency items on the project, and with the hope that we would finish that fifth one here in the month of March, which we, we have here beginning in, in April. So I'm here to announce that all five of the deficient, major deficient items have been resolved. Four of them were items that would require some work being done out in the, out in the field. Uh, to mitigate the, the, the issue, this fifth item was more of, of a design item that hasn't been built yet, but is in the future. So we've got this this one resolved as well. So it's a we'll be posting what I handed out to you here as a project update with the five items that were issues and the resolution to them. We'll post that on our same, same website, updating the last one that we did for the public to view as well. So okay. uh, like Lynn said, appreciate uh, your yeah. patience and we want to make sure we get this out to the public. To see that that we're, we're still following up on the same, on the issues that we had uh, brought up in the mm -hmm. past. But uh, like Lynn said, the new, and we've said it before, new management in the area, Justo Molina is the project manager and executive now, mm -hmm. and uh, fully focused on getting this project built. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Yeah. Thank you again. I just want to thank yeah. Valente for this. I know that we've had a lot of conversations, mm -hmm. and this is exactly what the citizens of Portland were asking for, kind of a brief summary of what happened. And I know this represents months and months yeah. of hard, hard work. So thank you very much for providing this. Okay. Yeah, it, it looks simple on this table simple. here, but it's like <laughs> yeah. you said. Yes. You can yeah. imagine yeah. what yes. the work was yes. yes. to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. like, mind mind. Okay, thank you all. Okay, we'll go on and move on to 5B, which is our regional uh, traffic safety task force update. Mr. Casper? Yep. So I will be brief because the meeting is at 3 o'clock. So uh, the MPO team will be presenting three items to the task force today, and then they will have the, the task force will have a chance to present any items that they're working on. As an example, last month, Stephanie Christina from TxDOT, she talked about uh, an event that the TxDOT was hosting at one of the high schools locally. And so I stopped by, and it was actually a really cool presentation. I'm trying to figure out how we can use it for some of our safety plan because they had a cab of a car that simulated rollover crashes being belted in versus not belted in and what happens both to the people who are in and belted if there's not somebody belted they become a 200 pound weapon but anyway um, they also had a uh, driving simulator um, and uh, a VR headset that simulated um, some uh, distracted or things so that was that was cool um, the three items that the MPO will be presenting to them are um, the uh, scope of the Regional Safety Action Plan, which is a required element if uh, our region wishes to apply for any of the Safe Streets for All funding for implementation, we have to have a Safe Streets for All plan. And so uh, we will be uh, creating that regional plan that will make all of our entities eligible for those funds. Our original hope had been to have our plan done by mid to late summer, which would have been in time if, the, if Federal Highway had followed last year's schedule and put the Safe Streets for All grant out in July for completion in October, we would have hit that schedule smooth like butter. They put it out last week. The, so the plan has to be adopted by June in order to be eligible for the implementation. We will not be able to meet that schedule. There's no way we can get a, an actual Safe Streets uh, a rigorous plan done by June. Uh, Rob and I have had some discussions about some things. One of the things that we are eligible for include demonstration projects. We would be eligible for that. So, and with the item that I'll, well, the uh, third item I'll be talking about. So the second item, uh, we'll, text, uh, we'll be talking about TxDOT safety campaigns. They've, they've uh, um, TxDOT is putting out some more safety campaign things. We'll be going over that. The third item we'll be talking about is our Vision Zero Suite. Uh, so Vision Zero Suite is a very rigorous software that can diagnose crash locations. And there's a difference between diagnosis and, and taking the crashes and summarizing them and looking. Uh, the uh, software, it uses 100 
multivariate regression statistical analyses, uh, and you, it looks at similar like intersections. It's a four-lane intersection or that intersects with another four-lane. It doesn't have a median, does it have a traffic signal, and so it goes through a, a whole series of analyses um, to diagnose what, what the types of crashes that are happening at that intersection. Um, we have completed, uh, the team has completed some uh, of that, those analyses that we asked, <coughs> we asked our members, are there any places they're interested in? We got a, a dozen or so. So we looked at the Staples corridor from uh, I-37 to SPID and then the intersections within that. Uh, we looked at some locations that Transit asked about that they're having issues and we're going to pre be presenting uh, a summary of those analyses. Um, but we think because of these analyses that we can get done, we will be very well placed to uh, put in a, a legitimate application for some demonstration projects. So um, there'll probably be more about that. In fact, and Rob and I talked today about us presenting some of what we did because I, it's a really powerful tool and I'd really like to show it off to you all. So um, anyway, so that's what is going on um, at the action plan in about 15, 20 minutes here. Okay. So. Uh, any questions of Ms. Casper on presentation? Okay, going on to 5B, it's the Carpenter CMPO Regional Coordination Group for Federal Transportation Grant Update. Mr. McDonald. I've got this one uh, in your packet. Uh, let me point you to attachment six. Uh, that's the summary table of all the moving parts in the federal funding from Infrastructure and Jobs Act. Uh, on, your, on your table, we did give you the, the latest notice of funding opportunity uh, for that Safe Streets uh, uh, for All type grant, which is r really coming out rapid fire. Uh, we're trying to work with the, your technical advisor committee and all the, the intersecting partners that can come and, and work with that group. So all the technical folks in the region are, are trying to keep up with all these grants and the timing of when they're eligible and how to get ready for applying for them. And so your, your, your TAC is really doing a great job in, in sharing information in a rapid fire manner. And so uh, in the table, I just wanna cover uh, some of the things that uh, are, are happening. Uh, the first one, uh, the, the raise grants. Um, we, we think uh, the, the deadline for that was uh, a couple months ago. And so when they award those, uh, we'll, we'll report that out to you. And so uh, the, the next one we talked about is about the fourth one down safe streets and roads for all. That's the one we just told you about that uh, had a to be announced. Well, it's been announced. Uh, and it's, it's too, yeah, we were hoping they were gonna be a little bit later. Uh, highlighted in green near the bottom of the page, uh, reconnecting communities pilot program. Uh, this one uh, is, is gonna come out again, but in the announcement from fiscal year 22, uh, there were a couple projects uh, that were awarded uh, the the two uh, the two reconnecting community grants in Texas. We put the summary sheet in your packet, uh, one for Austin, one for Houston. Uh, so they were successful. So can these grants come to Texas? Yes. Uh, have we reeled one in yet? Well, not as many as we'd like. Uh, we, we'd like to to get some more, but we we'd like to share with you that those communities that were successful, so our local partner agencies can look at how they wrote those projects up and if they're interested, apply for maybe similar projects that we know we have in this region. Um, next one I'll highlight is the, the charging and fueling infrastructure grant. Again, this one is uh, due soon. Uh, this one we're, we shared the information with, with all the folks. If they're interested, uh, they can take advantage uh, of trying to go after or some of these funds. Um, let's see, the next one I'll highlight the uh, I think it's on the third, yeah, third page. Uh, our folks, uh, folks at the RTA are submitting two grants, highlighted in uh, yellow, right above, uh, right above Port and Freight. Uh, that deadline is coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, we, we provide any information that they need for their grant application, uh, and we think they'll they'll make the submittal deadline, and we'll report out any success they have on either of those grants. And then uh, in your packet, we also. Uh, highlighted uh, where the port is applying for some grants. Uh, they're doing, they're working hard to pull in all the money they can for their activities over at the port. So uh, we share what, what they shared with everyone through their agenda. Uh, and, and, and 
as we see things in other folks' agenda, we'll pull those down too and share it with your technical committee, but also with you as well. Uh, and hopefully a uh, notice of award for some of those in, in the near future. Um, and the, the other part in your packet is the, the SMART grants. Uh, that, that's another one that's uh, uh, been awarded. We, we did not receive any uh, in, in our region. And so uh, we'll keep tracking that. But we did show you the fact sheet uh, of the SMART grant. So we shared that again with the technical folks in case they have any ideas to do similar projects related to the SMART grant. Um, with that, uh, that is the update. Again, some of these things are going to come out maybe between meetings. So we'll probably email to the technical folks and, and all of you if some of these notices come out between meetings. I think we may want to start emailing you ahead of time. Again, just to provide that information. Okay, any questions of Mr. McDonald on the presentation? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to item six, which we have a uh, executive session under uh, section 551.074, which is evaluation of contract and uh, performance of the regional transportation director. So with that, I will recess our committee meeting at 2.46 p.m. And if we will adjourn to the back room, we will go ahead and conduct the executive session. Um, I've already got it on the paper, but we concluded the executive session at 3.07 p.m. Is there? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Pending receipt of personal information. Okay. I'll second that motion. I've got a motion by Chairman Zahn and seconded by Mayor Scarrow. Okay. All those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And Mr. McDonald, uh, Ms. Glare has got the information that we need, and she'll okay. get that to you. Right. And she's giving it to you, okay? She carried the and most paper out. there's only four of us here, so the information we need we'll share with the, uh, everybody, then we can Sounds make good. Okay, moving on to item eight. Uh, is there any uh, member agency I statements? In, <laughs> I know. Any agency statements or anything, or any chairman, I mean, any committee statements? Community statements? None are there? Okay, yeah, item I'll, nine. I'll, I will request. Oh. Uh, Work Zone Awareness Month uh, in April. We'll have, Textile will have a Work Zone Awareness Week, uh, April 17th. I know you all have uh, employees that are out there on the road or roadside, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. other places working as well. Whatever you all can do to bring awareness as well for your area, then we'll be doing the same for, for Textile. Okay. Just so the public understands, be careful when people are out there mm -hmm. either working on water lines, sewer oh, lines, yeah. roadways, whatever Definitely. it is, okay. keep an eye out for them. Uh, any other committee announcements? Okay, hearing none from the committee, we'll go ahead to item nine, upcoming events. Uh, you got it there in your agenda, but our next transportation policy uh, regular meeting will be May the 4th. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all are going to be at the Hurricane Conference in Robstown, but that is yeah. that, that Thursday. Is that the same time? Same time. So if, you wanna so if the committee wants to, I don't know. I know I'm going to be at it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rowe will be, saying that for be at it. So we we'll probably need to look at a date. A week later or a day why, later? Why don't you send me this? I didn't bring my calendar yeah. to my truck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll send an email out. Send an email out and get our dates on it and stuff because okay. most of us will be over there at okay. the Hurricane Conference mm -hmm. and stuff. Okay. You have no, I'm good. Okay. A week later is good with me. Okay. You're good? Yeah. Okay. You didn't get to make a motion. You want to make a motion to adjourn? No, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna declare us adjourned at 3:14 p.m. Okay. Right. <laughs>